normal probability. In this program, we're going to introduce use of the normal probability distribution. The most important part about this unit is being able to distinguish for the first time between a sample of real data and a population model. We're going to be using the normal curve as a model of what we think a population distribution is like. Then using that curve we can calculate probability as area under the curve. We can also calculate backwards using what's called an inverse calculation. Fundamental to all this is going to be use of the z-scores and then finally we're going to apply our normal probability theory to use of an important model and that is the normal sampling distribution of x-bar. Using our normal model we're going to set up a model of what we think the population distribution is like. So when we use a normal model we have to be given the assumption of a normal distribution in the population. We have to also be given the population mean mu and we have to also be given the value of the population standard deviation sigma. With those three things the assumption of a normal distribution, the population mean mu, and the population standard deviation sigma, we can calculate the probability of getting a value above some x value we specify, or less than some value we specify, and finally the third type of problem will be getting the probability that our variable is between two values we specify. When we know these x values, this is a standard calculation or a forward calculation, but we can also answer questions like this. The top 10% of values is at least what x value? Or in the lower tail, the bottom 10% is at most what x value? When we're given the probability or the percentage and we work backwards to get that x value, we call this an inverse calculation. Our Excel tool is set up to do both of these for us very efficiently. So let's look at an example. Say we were working with a variable and we were told that we could assume that this population follows a normal distribution. Further, we're given the value of the mean, 15, and the value of the standard deviation as 6. We're going to calculate the probability that our variable will be greater than 23, less than 12, and between 10 and 23. And we'll do the following inverse calculations. The top 10% are at least what value? The bottom 5% are at most what value. And finally, the middle 95% of all values are between what two values, what min and what max. Looking at our Excel tool called Unit 2, the first thing that's important to note is that there are different versions of the Unit 2 Excel tool. One is called Unit 2 Mac and one is called Unit 2 PC. You'll want to have the correct one open for your computer. Then I'm going to click the worksheet tab called Normal Population. So I've already set this up to do the examples that we just listed. The mean mu is given as 15. The standard deviation is given as 6. We want the probability that our random variable is above 23. And we can see on our Excel sheet that the upper tailed probabilities are being calculated here in the middle using this middle curve. The blue shaded area is actually the answer. The number form of the answer is 0 .0912. So we would say the probability that our variable is greater than 23 
is 0 0.0912. 23 also has a z-score of 1.333. In fact, the probability of being more than 1.333 standard deviations above the mean is always going to be 0 0.0912. For this problem, 23 is the value, that's exactly 1.333 standard deviations above the mean. Similarly, if we want the probability that our variable is less than 12, now we want to calculate the probability to the left, or less than 12, which is a value we could input. 12, by the way, has a z-score of only negative 0.5, and we can see that the blue shaded area starts just one half of one standard deviation below the mean. Moving on, the probability that our random variable is between 10 and 23. The blue shaded area shows that 0 0.7065 of the curve area is between the values 10 and 23. These are examples of the three forward or standard calculations we can do with the normal curve. Let's do some inverse calculations. Here our input cells are the probabilities themselves. For example, the top 10%, so I go to my middle curve, which is upper tail probabilities, and I input 0.1, or 10%. The Excel tool will tell me that in order to get to the top 10%, you need to be 1.28 standard deviations above the mean. If I did the arithmetic, I would get 22.69. In other words, 1.28 times 6 plus 15 gives me 22.69. What if I wanted a lower tailed answer? For example, the bottom 5% are at most what value? So 0.05 is the probability that I want to mark on the curve. I know that that has to be 1.645 standard deviations below the mean, at least. The answer is 5.13. In other words, 5% of the time values will be less than 5.13. And then finally, we might do an inverse calculation for an interval. For example, the middle 95% of all values will be between the minimum 3.24 and the maximum 26.76. And we could see the large blue shaded area on our curve. Although our Excel tool makes calculating normal probabilities very simple, it's important to emphasize a couple of points. First of all, we're learning that probability is a function of relative location from the mean. Values that have higher z-scores are less likely to occur at random. So if an x value ends up with a z-score, that's pretty high, we would expect the corresponding probability to be low. On the other hand, if the z-score was low, that value is a value close to the mean, and we would expect probabilities associated with that value to be pretty high. The z-score measures relative location from the mean in standard deviations. In fact, it just simply tells us the number of standard deviations either above or below the mean. For normal probabilities, it's also important to note that if the z-score is the same, the probability is the same. There are an infinite combination of mu and sigma values we can put together to make a normal curve. But the z-scores 
are going to determine what the probabilities are. That's why if the z-scores are the same, no matter what the model, the probabilities will be the same. Now let's look at a special application of the normal probability distribution. We're learning a pretty important concept now called the sampling distribution of the sample mean. So what we're doing is we're using a normal probability distribution to show or model the distribution of all sample means that we can take for a particular sample size. The central limit theorem is one way that we can justify use of a normal model or we can simply be given that the use of a normal sampling distribution is okay. So we're going to learn the center of the sampling distribution, the standard deviation, what we call standard error of the mean, and finally how to put that all together to calculate probabilities for various values of the sample mean. So to understand what we mean by the sampling distribution of x bar, let's look at a simple example. Let's imagine that the distribution of numbers that we see is a population. And we can see that the population has variability. The lowest value in the population is 11, and the highest value is 59. And we would expect to see some cluster around the mean in the population, no matter what that value might be. Now imagine we took a random sample of three values from the population and calculated the sample mean for those three. I did that and I got a sample mean of 35. I did that two more times and I got two different sample means. So we can see that there's a degree of randomness associated with my sample mean and making probability statements about values of the sample mean would be helpful. But what we can also see is that all three x bar values are a lot closer together than 11 and 59, those extremes, the min and max from our population example. This is a property of the sampling distribution of x bar. Averages are always less variable than entire populations, simply because extreme values tend to average out. Back at our Excel tool, let's do some examples working with the sampling distribution of x bar. So instead of the worksheet tab normal population, we want to select normal x bar to work with the normal sampling distribution of x bar. We would need to be given the mean and standard deviation, just like we were last time. But in this case, we're going to also be given the size of our sample. So let's assume that we're working with samples of n equals 10. Now, this normal curve is a sampling distribution of x bar. The mean of the sampling distribution is the same as the population mean, 15. However, the standard deviation that we're going to use for these problems is quite a bit less than 6. The standard deviation of x bar is also known as standard error of the mean. And we compute this by taking the population standard deviation and dividing by the square root of our sample size. In this way, the larger the sample, the less variability we expect in our sample mean. In other words, the larger the sample, the closer x bar should be to mu. But once we input all of our information and the Excel sheet calculates standard error, now these normal curves functionally operate just like the normal population curves that we just demonstrated.
Except now, instead of looking for the probability of a single value above x, below x, or between two x's, we're looking for the probability of an average. For example, what's the probability that a random sample of 10 would produce a sample mean greater than 17? The greater than model is in the middle. We were given the x bar value and asked to compute the probability. So this is a forward calculation. Likewise, what's the probability that a random sample of 10 from this population will produce a sample mean that's less than 13.5? The z-score of a sample mean of 13.5 is less than 1, so we would expect that probability to be fairly high. And then finally, an interval. What's the probability that a random sample of 10 can give us a sample mean between 13 and 18? The large probability is shown in blue, and the answer would be 0.7972. We could also do inverse calculations. For example, the middle 95% of all sample means possible for a random sample of size 10 would be between 11.28 and 18.72. 95% of the time our sample mean is going to be between those two. Continuing with inverse calculations, we could also answer questions like this. What's the probability I'm sorry, the uh, top 5% of all sample means will be at least 18.12. The bottom 5% of all sample means will be at most 11.88. And we could see that each of these has the same z-score because in each case we're looking at the top 5% or the bottom 5%. A normal curve is a symmetric curve, so those probabilities would be the same. Again, if the z-score is the same, the probability is the same. This concludes the program Normal Probability. We're going to apply the use of our normal model to making inference and estimates about the population mean. We don't typically use this method, but it's a very simple method that we'll demonstrate in the next program, Introduction to Inference.